In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model a fork in Maya using the mesh tools in Autodesk Maya 2020. So the first thing we need to create is a plane. So I'm going to hold down to shift, right mouse click, and then create a plane. Now the default plane, polyplane, has about 10 subdivisions, which is uh, way too much for us. So in order to create a fork, we just need a plane with just about five by five subdivisions. So I'm going to select subdivisions with and holding down the shift left mouse click to select the subdivision height and move my mouse over the empty space here and middle mouse click and drag back or drag to the left until the numbers change down to five. So now I can see the grid is five by five units or five by five uh, square faces. So next I want to increase the size of this plane. So I'm going to click on width Click down to shift and left mouse click. Okay, all of this in the uh, the input of the polyplane in the channel box. Then move the cursor over to the empty space here while these two are highlighted. And then middle mouse click and drag to the right. So to just scale this up a little bit. Okay, so right now, make sure that your orientation is following the orientation of my uh, viewport. So you can see that the Z axis is pointing this direction. So uh, that will be the front. Okay, so I'll be extruding out the prongs of the fork right in this direction. So in order to understand how to effectively model out the fork using this base object, we will first have to take a look at some topological flow examples. And one of the good websites that you can take a look at this examples are the topolog topologyguides.com. Okay, there is a wealth of information on what kind of topology to apply okay, for modeling various sorts of objects. And in this example, we'll be using this from five faces, right? So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. From five faces, right, uh, I'm going to reflow the topology and to end it up with three faces. So we're going to modify our plane so that it looks like this example here. So going back to Maya. All right, so okay, I'm still in the uh, resize mode. I'm going to left mouse click to get out. Okay, so I'm going to hide the grid because the grid is very distracting. So in my viewport, I'm going to click on the grid icon here so that I don't see anymore. So right now we have to find a way to reduce the number of edges here so that it has three edges instead. And one of the tools I like to use is the collapse tool. So I'm going to go to edge selection mode, right mouse click, go to edge selection mode. And then I'm going to collapse this edge and this edge. All right, I'm going to press Q to select so that I don't see the move manipulator. And I'm going to apply something called collapse edge. So with the two edges selected, move your cursor over the selected edge and holding down the shift, right mouse click. And then you can choose the top option, collapse edge and then collapse edge. So when I collapse the edge, you notice that the edges like basically merge together into one point. And the same shortcut key can also be found up here. Okay, if you find that shift right mouse click right, it's very hard to access the shortcut. All right. So I'm going to do the same for this edge and shift select this edge as well. And this time I'm going to use the shortcut key here, left mouse click. And you have seen that now I have reduced the number of faces from five originally to only three faces. One, two, and three. Okay, so I'm going to right mouse click, go back to my edge section mode again. And right now, uh, we are going to reduce the number of edges here so that we can also form a flow back of the topological flow. All right, so the next edge that I want to remove is this one and this one. I want to collapse these two. So with both of them selected, I'm going to click on collapse edge. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do is to collapse the edge here and here. All right, and then I'm going to collapse the edge again. And then I'm going to end up with a unique topological flow. And you will have seen that right now I have achieved most of the, the shape that I want. So what's left is to remove these two edges. I'm going to press Control Delete to remove the edge. So right now you can see that I have a topological flow that 
flows this direction. And with this shape, I can start to model my fork. Okay, so first I'm going to select these three phases. All right, in phase selection mode, then press R to go to scale, and then scale it down to make my the neck of my fork. And next, I'm gonna come over here, and then I'm gonna select these edges that is coming out from this side, and I'm going to extrude them individually. So I'm gonna switch over to edge selection mode, right mouse click and hold, go to edge selection mode, select this edge. I'm gonna press Q to activate select so that the manipulator is not visible. Holding down to shift, okay, I can double click so that this entire row of edges are selected. Right, basically an edge loop here. And then I'm going to extrude. Now I'm going to press the Control E to bring up the extrude menu. And I'm going to just extrude a tiny section. I'm going to use the move manipulator here, drag and just move a tiny section here. Now in order to see the results, of whether we've extruded properly, we can press number three, and you notice that the edges are stuck together. We have actually extruded a continuous edge. So that is not what we want. So the reason is because we need to keep this keep faces together off. Okay, so when the keep faces together is turned off, you notice that there is a slight change in the subdivision here. All right. And while the manipulator is still selected, or while the extrude is still active, we can use the extrude's scale, grabbing the red cube here and then moving inwards to scale it in slightly. So that now you can see the prongs of the fork, right? Starting to form up nicely. So we can see five individual prongs. Okay, next, we just simply have to extrude out the prongs. Okay, so we're gonna repeat the extrude again, which you can do by pressing Control E. So you can see right now with this is sub, with this in subdivision preview number three mode, you can see an extra edge being extruded, and then we can grab the arrow and then pull out one section. We're going to repeat the extrude operation again, okay, by pressing G, and then move up another prong. Again, with all the individual edges selected, I can grab the red cube and then scale it inwards so that we can have a slight we can have a slight taper for the tips of the fork. Right, at this point, okay, you can manually try to uh, scale and resize your uh, fork if you want. So I can go over to vertex mode, for example, and then I can use my scale to just scale this out slightly, okay, just to change the shape of the fork. Okay, then finally, I'm gonna select these, these three edges here. Again, I'm gonna press Q, to go to selection mode, holding down the shift to select these three edges. Okay, or you can select this edge and holding down the shift and double click to select these three edges. And then we're gonna extrude them out to form the rest of the fox body. All right, I'm gonna press W to go to move mode. And then I'm gonna hold down the shift and left mouse click the blue arrow to pull out an extrusion. Okay, you can also use Control E and then extrude. That will work as well all right and then i'm going to press e to scale so uh, sorry r to scale and then just scale this outwards then uh, press ctrl e to extrude and then pull out another section all right press g to repeat last command which is extrude so i extrude another section and then using the scale of this of the extrusion to scale it inwards then maybe i'll just pull this out just a little bit Right, so now we have the body or the main body of the fork, the handle created. And now I just want to tweak the area here. I'm going to right mouse click, go over to vertex mode, left mouse click and drag a box over this section, then press R, scale, and then scale it inwards to narrow it down. Okay, so right now, again, we have this uh, flat looking uh, fork. So before we extrude it to give it a thickness, we want to select all these vertices here and take note that I'm now in subdivided mode, which is number three, if I press one. Okay, so this is what the fork really looks like in the base level. Okay, with the vertices selected, okay, I'm going to rotate and then just rotate it at angle. 
Okay, and then maybe I can grab these vertices and then pull it out slightly. And then this one, I just push it down slightly. So just to give it a very gentle curve. If I press number three, you can see that now this fork has a gentle curve like that. And we can use another tool called uh, Soft Selection to give our fork right a nice curve. So I'm going to select this row of vertices right about here. And then I'm going to press B to turn on Soft Selection. And right now, my soft selection is only limited to this to these uh, range of vertices. So I'm going to hold down to B, middle mouse click and drag to the right until it gradually affects a wider range of vertices. And then with my move manip manipulator active, I'm going to grab the Y axis and then just pull this down slightly. Okay, and I can grab this row of vertices here. And just push this down and right now you can see I have a nice curvature for the fork all right then finally all we need to do is to extrude all the faces to give it some thickness right mouse click I'm going to go to object mode and then just inspect the fork okay, and you can see that this area here still needs a little bit of tweaking which I'm going to do I'm going to go over to the edge selection mode Okay, my soft selection is still on. If you see this red, orange, yellow color, if you press B, you can turn that off. So I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to press Q so I don't see the manipulator. Then holding down the shift, double click to select this section. Then press W and then just push it down slightly. Then I'm going to do the same for this entire row. Double click and just push it down slightly. Okay, just tweak the shape slightly to give a nice consistent flow for this fork okay now we can go over to the face selection mode right mouse click go to face selection mode double click on one of the face so that all the faces will be linked faces will be selected then Control e to extrude right pulling on the blue arrow we can just push it up and then you can give it a nice thickness Okay, if you do not want uh, to use this uh, Translate Z option, which I'm going to undo, you can use the Thickness option. You can hold down to your Control key, left mouse click on the thickness, and then just push it out slightly so you can have a nice even thickness on your fork. Now you can end your modeling here and you can take this fork okay, as it is. Okay, but if you want to tweak this further, you can select the edges on the corners and you can apply a bevel to give it a harder looking edge. For example, right now the fork here, the points are very sharp. So I'm going to go to the base level, select the fork, press 1 to go to the base level. And then I'm going to select the individual faces in face selection mode, like so, holding down the shift. Then I'm going to shift right mouse click and bevel the face. Right, I'm going to use the default value, and now if I press number three, you can see now the fork's uh, tip is not so sharp. Right. So if you want to give the uh, fork a hard edge, you can select the face loops that runs across like that. Okay. So see what I do here? I select one face here, and then holding down the shift and double click, so the entire face loop is now selected. Okay, and then we can bevel this face. Okay, so holding down the shift right mouse click and then apply a bevel and we're going to use a very small fraction holding down to control left mouse click and push it back so we want to give it a very small value 0 0.01 and now if you go back to object mode you can see down the edge of your fork is much more defined all right so that's how you model the fork in maya so give this a try